the Abyss Order. With that said, it was a bit of a hassle, but I managed to dig up a few clues. Really? That quickly? You really are well connected, Master G. Luke. Come to think of it, Mr. Big Animal God Barbados, why exactly do you need the help of mere humans? Uh, how do I put it? The Seven, as people now know them, were once known as the Seven Archons. Each Archon presides over their own part of Tavat. That is the role the Archons play. Only in performing this duty can we attain power. But I don't like the idea of ruling Mondstadt, and I don't feel Mondstadt would really like it either. Go forth and establish a city of freedom without rule. We have not forgotten Barbados's wish for Mondstadt. Jean, you're such a devotee. Maybe someone got a little too free and is just too lazy to care. Uh, however it may have come to be, I haven't been back to Mondstadt for an extended period of time. Without a doubt, I am now the weakest Archon among the Seven. Aw, <laughs> you flatter me. Oh, such a humble god. Is it a blessing or a curse? <laughs> but we digress. Let's get back to the topic at hand. The common enemy of all mankind. We have tracked the Abyss Mage to the vicinity of the winery. I cannot stress enough how important it is to not let it escape. Mage was defeated, a certain energy dispersed from its body. It seems that energy was being used to cut off the connection between me and Duvali. Huh. Do you know of Storm Terror's lair? Of course. I believe the people of Mondstadt all know of it. After Duvalin woke up, he took the ancient ruins as his lair. As it was with the storms that previously cut Mondstadt off from the outside world, the entrance to the ruins is also sealed by a special barrier. But now, as the energy dispersed from the Abyss Mage, I was able to read the rhythmic flow of how the barrier's magic was woven. <laughs> I must admit, it sounds even more horrendous than a chorus of hilly churls, but it should be enough to let us break through the storm barrier and reach Storm Terror's lair. Which means we're going to confront Devalin? I'm fine with that. Jean is the one who wishes to avoid any direct confrontation. No. When there are no other options left, it is my responsibility to alter our course of action. If slaying him is our only choice, I will gladly become the knight that leads the charge. Fortunately, we have yet to need to go that far. Hmm. By that, you mean... I mean that the Holy Liar is not our trump card. Our real trump card? The Traveler, of course. The Traveler? Correct. But you have a much more precious forte. The impurities in the tears and the curse that binds Devalin belong to the same Maleficent power. Which means... You tone-deaf bard, don't you see how crazy- You've seen what Devon is like when he's ticked off? She'll be swallowed whole before she even gets to lift a finger! Hey. Nice plan. Worth a shot. I am with you, honorary knight. Oh, so we just need to fight monsters from the abyss and a dragon! No pressure or anything! Humans aren't without their strengths. Let's go. And so, epic actions of brave heroes finally leads to this 11th hour.
It's a storm barrier. It looks so dangerous. Leave it to me. Although this wooden liar is all I have, I don't need the liar to break through this kind of storm barrier. Uh, uh, wait, what is that? Enemy attack! Prepare yourselves! Trolls usually do not venture into areas with high elemental concentrations. It puts a heavy burden on their bodies. The Abyss Order must be manipulating them behind the scenes, yet they shouldn't have been able to determine that we would come. They're presumably spreading their forces to halt our plans. Without further ado, I suppose I can play faster if my only audience is the wind. This is it. We are now entering Storm Terror's lair. Watch yourselves. Let's move. Suppose we could make use of that wind current. Let's make a detour then. Heading up. Let's make a detour then. Heading up. <sighs> hmm. Do you think there will be abyss mages hiding in the ruins? Either way, if we do run into one, we will let the victorious Master D. Luke do the. Do not underestimate them just because I have beaten one of them before. <sighs> I'm not boasting. I'm simply saying there is more to the Abyss Order than a few mages. Correct. <laughs> That's why I tagged along after all. Well, that and also for your safety. <sighs> why am I so diligent? Too diligent for a poet, in fact. So says the person that made zero effort to search for the dragon tears and drink in the tavern all day. Paimon doesn't get it. What part of you is remotely diligent? advance any further. The ruins seem to be guarded by ancient seals. Is this the work of Dvalin? No. These ruins were once part of an ancient city. Dvalin just happens to be nesting in these ruins for now. These ruins even predate the existence of the Four Winds. Mondstadt is a city without a ruler. However, before it was, it was ruled over by a tyrant. Anyway, I'll sing you that story when we have a chance in the future. The markings on this seal. If my archaeological knowledge is not mistaken, this appears to be a light actuator. If we retrieve and reintegrate all the parts, we should be able to get it working. We should be close to completing the ceremony for this actuator. 
Let's put the last part back in C. I'm thinking about turning these adventures into songs after we're done. Hopefully, this song will be sung for years to come by the people of Mondstadt, just like the legend of Vanessa. I have loved that song since I was small. How are you feeling today, honorary knight? I am completely prepared and fully confident that we can do this. Even Master De Luca accompanied us to the very end. Despite only being an accidentally involved Bystander. You shared your secret with me, and I only returned your trust to the same extent. It's freedom. Freedom? When you first arrived at Mondstadt, did no one tell you that Mondstadt is the city of freedom? <laughs> she really is a child of freedom. Mondstadt is a romantic city without the reign of a king. And its citizens enjoy the most freedom amongst the seven nations. I hope the dragon that once protected Mondstadt will soon be free too. No one should have deceived him by telling him that Mondstadt betrayed him. And no one should have told him that it was his eternal duty to protect the city. He has the right and freedom to choose his own way of life. Venti? Well then, Traveler, may the thousands of years of wind that have blown through Mondstadt go with you. Just like the last time, I shall channel animal energy for you. Oh, no wonder you said his voice sounds familiar.
just now. Why? Why did you not ask me to protect you like the last time? Me not wanting you to listen to the Abyss Order doesn't mean that you have to listen to me. Freedom, if demanded of you by an Archon, is really no freedom at all. Is this the power of the Animal Archon? But I am no longer part of the Four Winds. Even if that's so, you still protected us regardless. Now spread your wings of freedom and go with my blessing. And so, the Storm Terror threat was quelled. I clarified the misunderstanding to the citizens of Mondstadt and let them know that they are safe. To them, it seems Storm Terror attacked Mondstadt out of nowhere and then vanished just as quickly. They must be finding the whole ordeal very confusing. However, winds change their course. Someday, they will blow towards a brighter future. You guys are back! <laughs> the Honorary Knight returns triumphant! May I take your order? Why so cold? I've always thought that we enjoy quite the intimate friendship. <laughs> it seems your great battle sharpened not only your combat skills, but your wit as well. Ah, <sighs> a night after my own heart. To bask in the presence of Mondstadt's new big hero is quite the morale boost. And that's coming from a knight. Sweet-talking, sugar-coated Captain Kaya. <laughs> Nonsense. I speak from the heart. Me? Nothing. On the contrary, I'm trying to work out what others are plotting. That's why I'm here. Somewhere quiet, where I can collect my thoughts. So what you thinking about then? The Abyss Order. A dragon wreaks havoc in Mondstadt, and the acting Grand Master leaves the city to combat the threat. Strategically, that's the perfect moment for the Abyss Order to make their move. If you were the Abyss Order, would you squander this golden opportunity by sending in nothing more than a few... To get to the bottom of it, I decided to wait. So I waited, and watched for their next move. Then came the day you made all hell break loose in Storm Terror's lair, just as the hilly churl's cries sounded from the city gates. That same day, I saw shadowy figures lurking in the city itself. Inside the city? Well, all the other knights were outside, fighting the enemy. As you can imagine, that left the inside of the city completely unguarded. Except for me, of course. And so I approached the Abyss Order infiltrators for a bit of... Mm, let's call it fraternizing. Through various means, 
I managed to gather some rather interesting intel. The situation is this. The Abyss Order. They are united under a single leader. The Abyss Order has a leader? Yes. And it was this very leader who devised the plot to turn Dvalin into a weapon of war. What exactly did you have to do to find this out? <laughs> Let's just say I'm blessed with certain linguistic powers. There's more. The Abyss Order has a name for this leader. They call him the Prince. Now, I'm sorry to cut this intelligence briefing short, but I do believe I spy Amber heading this way. I think she's still angry with me for my absence from the defense effort during the attack. I'd better slip away before she notices me. One minute I see Kaya, the next he's slipped away. Clear sign of a guilty conscience. Hmm, I agree. He sets a terrible example for someone who's cavalry captain. Uh, but let's forget about him. I worked super hard today and my tummy's rumbling. Let's order. Hi, Sarah. One sticky honey roast, please. Today's recommendation is the steak. So, now the storm terror threat is behind us. What are your plans for the next step? Paimon thinks it's time to leave Monster and keep looking through the Seven Nations until we find clues about her brother. Huh, really? Oh, well, I guess this is... Hey, don't feel down. You'll always be a friend of the Knights of Avonius and our honorary knight. Wherever you may go and wherever the wind may blow. That's the spirit. Remember, Mondstadt will always welcome you. All right, now let's eat before it gets cold. Mmm, that was good. Note to Paimon, Amber's recommendations are worth the wait. Of course. Well, I don't trust myself in the kitchen. You can always trust me with the menu. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Jean's waiting for you at the cathedral. It's something to do with the Holy Lyre de Himmel. You'd better head there now. This is Barbara, the deaconess of the church. She is here to retrieve the Holy Lyre de Hamel. May the Animal Archon protect you. I'm not really in a position to speak compared to our acting Grand Master, but I still want to thank you all on behalf of all of Mondstadt for your assistance. Fortunately, everything was resolved peacefully. I can't imagine how an all-out war between the military and the dragon would have ended. Now the Fatui have no choice but to keep their mouths shut. They must be annoyed that things didn't turn out as planned for them. This time, they even lost their best excuse to pressure the Knights of Favonius. Diplomatically speaking, they gained nothing, and on the contrary, simply proved just how vexatious they can be. Sounds like quite the story. So, did you bring the Holy Liar with you? We cannot ask you to keep defending the Liar forever. The Seneschal has been pressing me for a while now. We, uh, did bring it with us. Um, it's just, it's a little... Oh, don't worry. I'm not here to collect rent. The church has always received special funding.
managed to fix it, but you'll never touch the liar again! We, uh, really should get going. That trick I used to repair the holy liar... <laughs> I mean, the magic I used isn't going to hold forever, you know. What? <gasps> <laughs> you poor death bard! Hey, don't go! At last, Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. <laughs> Scurrying through the streets looking for leftovers? Mondstadt calls this a god? Resident rodent beats invasive vermin. <laughs> Don't you dare speak back to me, insolent bard. Absentee archon of Mondstadt. How impotent you've become. That smirk you wear looks out of place. Did you steal it from your master's face? <clears throat> She's held your tongue. <sighs> so, this is a gnosis. Wouldn't huh? be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Beauty is a waste. <laughs> When the beholder has no taste. <laughs> Venti! <laughs> well, we have what we came here for. Come, before our dear Favonian friends arrive. Leave nothing for them to find. Exactly. I found you lying unconscious outside the cathedral and used my elemental powers to heal you. That bard awakened first, but strangely, my healing powers had almost no effect on him. This is the first time I've encountered such a patient, but he just said, It's completely normal, and then got up and left the cathedral. He left? Already? Where'd he go? The symbol of Mondstadt's hero. That's what he said. I wanted to stop him, but Jean, uh, I, I mean, Master Jean, said to let him- Paimon remembers Venti healing under that tree before. It's probably due to the connection between Windrise and the animal Archon. Master Jean has figured it out as well, but we can't tell Barbara. Well then, best be off to Lele. 
If the dissension ritual you failed to tally, then another year you must dally.